Hi folks, um, it turns out I got the perfect opportunity to show you about separation, meaning I want you to stand and get gentle about this rope and flag, and I want you to move when I ask you to move. That's what this is about. So those of you that are interested in uh, roping, this would be another exercise. Now this mare was... I just got done shoeing her, and she decided last time and this time on one hind foot, one hind foot, she wanted to pull back. So I set her up with my rope and said, go ahead and pull back, I'll show you. That's what it looks like. So you put your safety knot over there so you don't have to be around the melee. Now she gets to make a choice. And for those of you that are interested in packing or roping, you tie a knot in your rope and jerk your slack right there. And you can start getting a horse good about this. So it's good practice for you about jerking your slack and knowing what the tip of the rope does. Of course, you do both sides. Now, she chose to move. She's got to make a decision. I'm going to put her back. And this is separation. I'm asking her to move now. I'm asking her to move. I'm asking her to move. Now remember, this ain't no two-year-old colt. This is a 12-year-old mare. And now she can stand and understand that she can take it. I'm asking her to move. Good. See how I didn't have to use the rope? This ain't a war. It's just a matter of getting things correct. I'm standing in front of her. Well, okay. I'm standing in front of her. Take it, horse. This is separation. She just figured out she doesn't have to move. She's choosing to, but she doesn't have to. There. Now, I'm standing in the place that I never stand, which is in front of the eye. But this mare seems to think she can pull back, so that's why I'm in front of the eye. Not to mention she's 12 years old. So that's kind of how you do it with the rope until they just stand still. Now the flag. Because nowadays we figured out cowboy and that these flags come in pretty handy, especially working in an alley or loading trucks. And she has to get used to the flag. So like Mr. Dorn said, you make an outline of their body both sides come into the blind spot, too bad, back over the top, and down. Now this is quiet, in other words, I'm just showing it to her. And here's the part you gotta understand. The reason I wanna do separation is because a horse can lock up all four feet and there's a difference between standing quiet and bracing up. So I need you to understand that this is a horse that's on the verge of bracing, but is in fact standing. So now we have the noise, the sound of the flag, and the horse had to leave. So when you get them set up like this, you can just keep switching sides. This is what the horse is called sacking out, and it has to get used to this because the guy that owns this horse, he likes to use a, a flag to load cattle and work in the alley and all that stuff, and he's pretty wild with it, so I gotta get her right about that. All right, now I'm gonna show you separation. Now, I'm gonna change the story of the flag and come in with energy and tell the horse to move over. Here it comes. That means move. See, her feet were stuck. Now I'm gonna walk over here and I'm gonna ask her to move. Here it comes, horse. Thank you so much. That's separation. Now, I don't need you to go anywhere. Just stand there. She started to leave, then she said, oh, I get it. So, this can be dangerous if you do it wrong, but this is about the safest way you can do this. And there's uh, several people have got a hold of me about this pulling back thing. And this is my answer to you. 
And that thing about don't try it at home, well, you sure as hell try it at home because you don't want to try it at a Brandon or when you're shipping or around people, you might get somebody hurt. This is sacking out. This is asking a horse to move. Here, it, thank you. Take the pressure off. That's the important part here. This is why polo people can swing a mallet. This is why cowboys can swing a rope. You need to move here, it comes. See, now the feet are stuck. The horse knows I want it to move. Here, good. All right, now I don't want you to move. Just stand there. I hope this makes sense to you. This is the difference. This is called separation. Now, if you got some bronco, bronco, they'll slap you in the head. So you got to pay attention what kind of horse you do this to. Get your groundwork done first. Rope them, get them ready. Get them prepared for this. But for me, for a horse that pulls back and a horse that needs to learn how to take the pressure of a flag and, oh, by the way, separate about the difference between just rubbing it on them and then ask them to move, this is the perfect scenario. As soon as they move, I take the pressure off. Now watch. There's your reaction of your horse. Now, he's moving his lips. Guess what? When you see that tongue, that means they're nervous. This is not mean, it's not uh, whatever you call it. Get things prepared, do it right. The guys that punch cows for a living, they, they punch cows for 30, 40, 50 years. I'll guarantee you, if you set them down and you're visiting, if you're lucky enough to get them to visit with you, they would say they spent most of their career learning what not to do. Well, that's how it works in the cowboy deal. Let me show you what you don't do. You don't take a horse and tie him up like this, which is the same idea as a hitch rack, and then go to flogging on him with a flag. This is how you fail. You set your horse up to fail. This is the wrong way to do it. There's nowhere for this horse. It's got a solid wall in front of it. That's why we don't use hit tracks. Those are for B Westerns. Teach them to hobble, teach them to stand, hang them, tie them, but don't set up the scenario I showed you over there like this, because you will die and you will ruin your horse. Thank you.